In this morbid but fascinating part of our journey through the world of Oriental beliefs, we will explore together ancient Egyptian concepts of the afterlife, or in other words, life after death, and the afterworld, or in other words, the world after the regular world. The ancient Egyptians don't seem to have made much of a distinction between such an afterworld and the place where the gods dwelt. Connections between the regular world and the afterworld could occur on a spiritual level through dreams, visions and the like. In other words, for the ancient Egyptians, death meant only the end of earthly, earthly life. But at the same time, it meant the beginning of another form of life in the next world, in the form of a transformation into a soul or a spirit. In the Egyptian imagination, the process of dying and subsequent rebirth is intimately linked to the course of the sun. In the first week of this course, we saw that the sun, which is light and heat, was considered a necessary element in the birth of all life. That's why the process of dying and rebirth was associated with the course of the sun over 24 hours every day. Before explaining how this worked, let me first explain how the ancient Egyptians picture this daily course of the sun. First, there is the earth, which is the world of the living. During the 12 hours of the day, the god Ra navigates the sky in this day boat, or manjet, and crosses it from sunrise to sunset including its zenical, zenital location. During this daytime period, the god Ra takes the shape of Ra Arakti, Ra of the two horizons, with the head of a falcon. After traveling the sky in his day boat, Ra changes its appearance at dusk and turns into the so-called age sun depicted with the head of a ram. Secondly, there is a rea beneath the earth, the underworld, which the Egyptians called the duat. During the 12 hours of the night, the god Ra navigates the underworld in his evening boat, or mesketet. At the dawn of the following day, the god Ra is reborn in the appearance of the god Kepri with the head of a beetle. Now, let's have a look at how this daily movement of the sun is related to the death of a human being as it is described in the well-known text called the Book of the Dead. This Book of the Dead is an ancient Egyptian funerary text used from the beginning of the New Kingdom onwards, that is from about 1550 BCE, and mostly written on papyrus scrolls. In fact, the original Egyptian name of the text should be translated as the Book of Coming Forth by Day, and this title is actually more revealing than the simplified Book of the Dead, as we will very quickly see. The ancient Egyptians believe that it was important for a deceased person to be constantly exposed to the light and the heat of the sun, this is why the deceased was believed to follow the god Ra in his everyday journey. During the night, the sun traveled in the underworld, the Duat, and provided light to the death that lay there beneath the earth. During the day, the dead were believed to crave the act of coming forth by day. This expression, coming forth by day, means emerging forth into the light or, in other words, the daily rebirth of the death, just as the sun reappears each morning. In the different copies of the Book of the Dead that survives, survive up to the present day, there is much variety with regards to the choice, the number, the length and the order of the different formulas that could be used. These papyrus scrolls were manufactured in specialized workshops and contained texts that were pre-formatted 
for any specific deceased individual, one just needed to insert the relevant names and functions in the appropriate places. Now that you understand the Egyptian concepts of death and rebirth after death, you are ready to tackle a closely related topic, the importance of the corpse and the tomb. The Egyptians always clung to a fundamental belief in a direct connection between this world and the underworld. The most important physical link was the tomb or a funerary stela. The more lavish the burial was, the more successful the afterlife was expected to be. But it's not only the tomb or stila that are fundamental to this belief, but also the dead body of the deceased itself, the corpse. In order to understand the importance of the corpse for the Egyptian concepts of death and rebirth after death, you should realize, first of all, that the Egyptians thought that all transformation in a soul or a spirit began with a reawakening of the corpse after it had been deposited in the tomb. And this is why they always put considerable effort into preserving the human body intact. The Egyptians conceived the preservation of the corpse as the preservation of the person's essence. In this sense, mummy cases or statues could also provide the soul or spirit with temporary resting places between two journeys. Now, let's have a look at what happens after a person dies in this view of life and death. One particular chapter of the Book of the Dead describes how the deceased enters the tomb and from there descends to the underworld. At this stage, the corpse must regain the physical capabilities it had on Earth. But before this journey downwards, several other activities had to be carried out here on Earth. Once the corpse had been placed in the tomb, the so-called opening of the mouth ceremony had to be performed and the spirit of the deceased had to be maintained through offerings and rituals. And although the deceased was supposed to move on to a new life beyond the grave, it was necessary to first restore the same powers that his or her mortal body had enjoyed upon earth. Senses, breathing, eating, speech, mobility of the limbs and sexual potency. At this stage, these are three more typically Egyptian concepts that need some explanation. The Ka, the Ba and the Ak. But let's take a break and then go to the second part of this unit to understand them. <laughs> 